from starving to thriving. Here's how to do it. Support your, surround yourself with a supportive community. We talked about that earlier. If you don't have one, start to find one. And the internet is a great place for that, um, as well as sort of getting involved in your, your arts community wherever you live. Um, surrounding yourself with supportive pe people, family, friends, mentors. Write stuff down religiously. Um, I truly believe that when you get your, your worries out onto paper, there is a release that happens that is very profound. I carry a notebook with me everywhere and I write as much as I can down in it or draw sometimes. Um, I also write down all my ideas so I don't forget them. Um, I write down just about everything that comes to my mind. And I feel like writing stuff down is really important. No one ever has to see it. You never have to publish it. If you want to write a blog post about it on your blog, that's great. But really, it's your way of sort of releasing and writing. Begin to chart your path. I'm going to use this term, charting your path, to sort of cover a lot of what we're going to do in the next two segments, starting very quickly with, with Gabriella as our, as our first guinea pig. Um, that includes vision mapping, which is basically brainstorming all your big goals for the next one to five years and letting yourself dream big about what you, where you want to land, at least you know, initially, as an artist, without using the words, I'm not sure if I can do this, or I don't know if this is realistic, or maybe I don't have the skills for, for this, letting all of that go. And then we're going to take those big sort of lofty goals and break them down into really practical goals and action steps that will help you to get there. The last thing is to go outside of your comfort zone every day. I pretty much live outside my comfort zone, which means I'm a little anxious a lot of the time. But it, it serves me well. And I think as artists, this is a place where we have to go, whether it's in your work, right, in your creative process, pushing your work, or whether it's in promoting your work and really sort of taking on this idea of like putting your work into the world and feeling like so nervous about it because you're afraid of what people will think, um, to um, embarking on some aspects of business that may, as a right-brained person, may feel really uncomfortable to you because you're very, um, you're, because you're very right-brained and organizing things maybe isn't your thing. So go outside of your comfort zone every day. All right. So overview of the goal setting process, which we're going to start with. Vision mapping, we're going to start with that. Core values, I'm going to have you um, make a list of all the things that feel important to you. These are your values that you're going to keep in mind for um, you know, the next, uh, um, you know, for your art career. Like, what are the things that are important to you and that you want to always bear in mind? We'll go more into that soon. Intermediate goals, these are sort of manageable goals that you can accomplish in a week or a month or two months or three months that stem from the big goals on your vision map. And then actionable tasks, these are the things that you can do in one day or one hour to sort of get you closer to your intermediate goals and, and the big goals on your vision map. Don't worry, I'm going to go back over all of that and give you examples and all of that very soon. So vision map. Now, this is a tool. It's like a tool I've been using since I worked in a nonprofit organization um, for many years. And I worked under this really wonderful executive director who um, was one of the most visionary people I've ever met. She just retired, actually after running the same education nonprofit for many years. And she used to always bring in people to inspire us and to teach us new leadership skills and things like that. And um, one of the things I learned how to do in working with her was this idea of brainstorming and vision mapping. So your name doesn't actually have to go in the middle. It can be, you could write my goals, or you know, I'm going to show you an example of a vision map that I made a few years ago. Um, and in the middle, it says, Remainder of 2010, these are the things. Now, I'm going to be really vulnerable and put this up here. This is an actual vision map I made that I found. Um, it's kind of messy, but it just shows it doesn't have to be pretty. I love the one on the bottom right, less ego. <laughs> and I was probably telling myself not to be so concerned with what other people thought about me or my work at the time. 
This was, this, this was um, early 2010. This was before I hit my tipping point. You can see on there, too, I wanted more illustration jobs. I wasn't getting enough. Now I wish I, I had less <laughs> sometimes. I wanted to make a pattern collection, which I've done in spades since then, but I don't think I had made one yet then. Maybe I had made a few individual patterns, but no pattern collection. I wanted to get more organized. That still would be on my vision map today. Um, more art sales. I wanted to sell more work. I wanted more balance in my life. Still struggling with that. <laughs> um, I was really wanted to concentrate my efforts more. I wanted to get out of debt. I have done that. Um, I wanted to write a kid's book proposal, which never happened. That also shows that sometimes you write stuff down that you end up changing your mind about because other stuff takes over. And I also wrote compassion on there. So who knows <laughs> what that was about. <laughs> um, maybe towards myself or my partner. I'm not really sure. So I was using this, this tool, you can see at the time, to um, think about how I wanted you know, the things I wanted to focus on for the rest of that year. You can use a vision map for anything. 